Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The first half of the Miocene saw the rapid spread and diversification of proboscideans. As their ancestral African continent pushed northwards and collided with Eurasia, these trunked mammals ventured out across new lands, becoming well established in North America by the Middle Miocene. The most derived clade of proboscideans were the elephantoids, being the only forms to survive into modern times. First diverging approximately 16 million years ago, these animals were the sister lineage to the Gomphotheres, and included many of the largest known proboscideans aside from Dinotherium. Apart from the familiar and well-known Elephantidae, which includes the modern African and Asian elephants, as well as the extinct mammoths and the genus Paleoloxodon, Elephantoidia contains a selection of less familiar forms that, in my opinion, don't receive enough attention. Therefore, this video will cover the more basal elephantoids, saving the elephantids themselves for another time. A good place to start would be with the stegodontids. This family, composed of just two genera, were among the most basal elephantoids and were native to Africa and Asia from the Middle Miocene to the Late Pleistocene. In form, these animals would have appeared very similar to living elephants, with elongated flexible trunks and robust bulky bodies. The oldest known genus was Stegolophodon, which first appeared in the fossil record approximately 16 million years ago, and seems to have evolved in Asia before later spreading to Africa. The most ancient remains associated with this genus have been uncovered from Thailand, where this up to 7 ton herbivore fed on a mixture of leaves, twigs and shrubs in a tropical forested environment. In life, Stegolophodon possessed four tusks, two in the upper jaw and two in the lower jaw, while the molars were low crowned, with a series of banded ridges indicative of a mostly browsing ecological niche. At present, up to five species are known, with one of these probably giving rise to the related genus Stegodon. This wildly successful animal first appears in the fossil record roughly 11.6 million years ago, and spread across a huge swath of Africa and Eastern Asia. More similar in appearance to living elephants than Stegolophodon, this pachyderm possessed just two tusks in the upper jaw, which in some older individuals grew so close together that there was no room for the trunk to fall between them. Instead, the trunk would have been held over the sides of the tusks, which were curved and highly elongated. Up to 13 species have been described, with a tremendous range of sizes. The largest known member of the genus, Stegodon zdanskii, was among the most massive of all proboscideans. Native to northern China from the latest Miocene and Pliocene, this species stood up to 3.87 metres or 12.7 feet tall at the shoulder and weighed in at approximately 12.7 tonnes. This is comparable to the largest known Dinotherium individuals and is only outranked by the truly gargantuan Paleoloxodon nomadicus. Other species of Stegodon found on the mainland, which include the Indian S. Ganesha and the Southeast Asian S. elephantoides, were also of a large size, weighing up to 10 tons. Like modern elephants, Stegodon species were probably adept swimmers, as fossil evidence of this animal has been uncovered from islands across Asia. Stegodon trigonocephalus from the middle Pleistocene of Java had clearly undergone a process of island dwarfism, as the species was less than half the size of its mainland relatives, being comparable in size to a modern white rhino. Other insular forms were substantially smaller. Stegodon sondari lived on Flores during the early Pleistocene about 900,000 years ago, and was the size of a small water buffalo at just 1.2 meters or 3 feet 11 inches tall at the shoulder. It was probably descended from the aforementioned S. trigonocephalus, and it had proportionally short legs, which may have been an adaptation to clambering over rough terrain. Around 850,000 years ago, Stegodon sondari disappeared from Flores, probably due to a large volcanic eruption. But a new wave of stegodontids quickly recolonized the island. The mid-sized Stegodon florensis probably originated from either Java to the west or Sulawesi to the north and eventually evolved into a new dwarf subspecies. These dwelt in a bizarre endemic environment and were hunted by Komodo dragons, the dwarf hominin Homo floresiensis, and giant storks that stood up to 5 feet 10 inches tall. Additional insular forms were present in the Philippines, Timor, and Japan, 
with three roughly cow-sized species present in the latter region. The smallest known member of the genus was Stegodon sumbaensis, from the Indonesian island of Sumba, with an estimated body mass of just 250 kilograms or 551 pounds. Being mixed feeding animals that seem to have preferred forested ecosystems, Stegodon persisted longest in the humid woodlands of Eastern Asia, with the youngest confirmed specimens hailing from late Pleistocene deposits in China. Unsubstantiated reports of the genus surviving into the Holocene circa 4,100 years ago have surfaced, but these remain debated and controversial. A more derived grade of elephantoids were contemporaries of Stegodon. These were the so-called Tetralophodont gomphotheres. These genera received this name as they were once thought to have been members of Gomphotheridae, although recent studies have disproven this and placed them as close cousins of living elephants. The oldest of these forms was the genus Pidiolophodon, an Asian elephant-sized animal that was native to Nebraska and Texas from the mid to late Miocene. A slightly later and superficially gomphothere-like form, Tetralophodon, was more widespread, being native to Europe, Asia and Africa, possessing four tusks, with those in the lower jaw measuring over 6 feet long, this animal stood up to 13.5 feet tall at the shoulder and weighed in a region of 10 tons. The molars were low crowned, with four cusps that were effective at crushing and grinding vegetation. A more well known and more elephant like genus, Anancus, originated in the late Miocene and dwelt across Afro Eurasia. Possessing shorter limbs than modern elephants, this genus sported a pair of incredibly elongated straight tusks in the upper jaw, which could grow up to 13 feet in length. These were probably utilised for defensive purposes, as well as in intraspecific competition. About the size of an African bush elephant, Anancus was probably a forest-dwelling genus that fed primarily on leaves, shrubs and woody plants. Originating in what is now Pakistan roughly 8.5 million years ago, Ananka spread into Europe by 7 million years ago, and from there moved south into Africa. The African and Asian species died out at the end of the Pliocene, while the European species, Ananka's avernensis, was the youngest known form, surviving into the early Pleistocene about 2 million years ago. It is probable that the extinction of this animal was hastened by cooling and drying trends at the end of the Pliocene which would have reduced the savanna forest habitats favoured by Anancus to be replaced by more open grasslands. This was not, however, the youngest known member of the so-called Tetralophodont gomphotheres. That honour would go to the modestly sized North American genus Morelia, which was native to Arizona and Texas between 1.8 and 300,000 years ago. About the size of a female Asian elephant, it is not clear what led to the extinction of this somewhat obscure animal, and further information concerning it online is very scarce. What we can say for certain is that, with the passing of the Stegodontids and relatives in the Pleistocene, only the closely related Elephantids would survive into the Holocene, but that is an entirely separate and complicated matter best left for a future episode. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will cover the earliest Synapsids and their relatives from the late Carboniferous and early Permian. So until then, I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.